Jameson Parrish. I'm an assistant professor of clinical medicine in rheumatology is my subspecialty. Um, and uh, I'm full-time here at HSS. I'm also full-time faculty at Cornell Weill Medical College and also at New York Presbyterian College um, uh, or, or University uh, Hospital. Um, my area of interest has been in rheumatic disease of various sorts, particularly those related to infectious causes of rheumatic disease. And uh, we're talking today about Stills disease, uh, and my association actually is, is, will be evident with uh, Jonathan, how I got to know him and how we made the diagnosis, which was pretty evident when he came here, and what we did to turn that around. Stills disease is, is a clinical description, okay? It's, uh, it was something that was described by uh, Dr. Stills, okay? who noticed that particularly a group of children presented with these fevers uh, of a very classic pattern, very high fevers, daily basis, the kids looking incredibly sick during the times of the fevers and then at other times seeming to be okay. Often with the fever they would have a rash um, and with it they may very well have had some form of arthritis. The what he noticed is that the disease took a more systemic pattern, meaning that the disease affected multiple organs and was very much involved with inflammation in various parts of the body, as opposed to some of the other childhood illnesses that affect joints, which tend to be maybe more joint-directed. JRA is an old term now. We now use JIA, which is in, meaning that JRA stood for juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Now we talk about juvenile inflammatory arthritis. Traditionally, those have been viewed, if, it depends on if you're a lump or a splitter, but splitting it up, what we know now is that they're really quite different diseases. Some children will actually develop arthritis in one or two joints. Some children can de develop arthritis in multiple joints. Some of them may have arthritis only for a limited period of time and others may go on to a very chronic, unrelenting arthritis and joint problem. In the case of Stills disease, systemic onset JRA, okay, that's a very different kind of clinical picture and outcome compared to all the others that you have, uh, you know, that, that most people think of as JRA or JIA. Let's talk about Jonathan. Um, we talked to him earlier um, and got a pretty traumatic picture of what happened and it seemed mm -hmm. very traumatic. It was, it was very dramatic for him. He was doing just fine and within a matter of hours, you know, developed severe sore throat and had to be helped to the office. At, not my office at that time, but to an outside office. Is and within common? a matter of a couple of weeks was hospitalized. Is that common? Pretty common. It frequently is a very rapid onset. Um, and when people have flares, if they do have flares later in years, the, it, res it comes on very quickly as well. Frequently replicating the same pattern that they had before. So a lot of people will know, you know what, I'm about to have a flare here. The first couple of times it happens, people can get confused and not sure that they don't have just a bad strep throat or something like that, you know, that may be going on and so they wait it out and frequently early on it can be missed because it can look like a number of other illnesses under that situation. How's he doing now? He's doing great. The only problem I have with Jonathan is trying to get him to take a little more time and spend, a, you know have a little bit more vacation. What do I say to parents? I, I say to parents, uh, we're in a completely different era, okay? Whatever they may read in so many places now is so old information, and that's great. It's really great because we had a number of things before that we would use to treat the disease that were variably affected. Yes, we, you know, we got people through but often with, you know, a much longer course before they came under control, with much higher doses of steroids and many other medications that had a lot of side effects. 
we're now understanding a lot about the disease that we did not know before. We're understanding how it actually may relate to some other diseases, okay, that have maybe a similar pathology and medications that may get this under control in a much more effective and uh, rapid, you know. In fact, Jonathan is the classic example. He had been sick for two months, I think, by the time we actually started Anakinra, which is the IL-1 in inhibitor. Uh, and he noticed a difference within a matter of hours. And having gone from daily fevers, from the inability sometimes to just simply sit up in bed, you know, w within hours, he was up and feeling great, moving around as if he had never had a problem. The only problem he had at that point was just having been so debilitated and his nutritional status and those kind of things. So we have moved from, from a time where there was uh, what little we could do, okay, may work only after a few months. Now we actually have the ability to get control and keep control in a rapid way. And I think that what you're going to find over the next year or two is that there's a number of other medications that are out there that uh, are going to be used more and more. And so even if someone breaks through some of these medications, we have ways of, of keeping that under control. The other thing that I say to parents is that the overwhelming majority of children who have this have it once or twice in their childhood and never have it again. Jonathan is unfortunate that actually he went for so long and then got hit again, you know, as a young adult. Um, but that's not the usual situation. It's not only not the end of the world, actually. Um, we are, I think that we have not only made some breakthroughs, major breakthroughs for the first time in the last year and a half to two years. Uh, I think in the next two years, we're going to be seeing even greater access to medications that should probably just shut this down right in its tracks. They're biologics, you know, looking at other, well, first of all, there are other IL-1 agents out there, okay, which uh, are going to be coming available. Um, and then there's the possibility of interleukin-6. And there have been patients who have actually been treated with TNF-alpha, anti-TNF-alpha agents who have worked very well. Um, so we have a number of possible combinations here. Treatment is of paramount importance. It, it is a disease that, as horrible as it looks, surprisingly takes a while before it takes a permanent toll. But it does. On joints, on organs. Um, so uh, if you don't get treatment, you will probably have irreversible damage. Support in education is tremendously important for a number of reasons because people need to understand what their disease is. If you don't understand what your disease is, you can't get control of it. It's important that patients actually take control. That's difficult. I realize I'm talking now about Jonathan. Jonathan is an adult. Jonathan has that capability. Uh, but for, for parents, it's really important uh, because as a parent, um, it becomes doubly important because you're taking both responsibility for your child and for your response to your child. And having to watch your child go through this and to keep your head above water and your wits okay, is something that is, under the best of circumstances, a, an overwhelming task to be informed, to actually have that information so that you can ask the questions and understand. Um, I can't imagine a parent going through this without needing every piece of information they can get from a reliable source. This will get better, the horror will end. Great, I mean, it's that simple. It's that simple. He had a hard time believing that too. Yeah, you told me that. And to some, you know, and no one who goes through this can possibly come through without the memory of it. Uh, but it's the good feeling, actually, that ultimately makes 
that become a part of your past.